The Art of Living Consciously The Power of Awareness to Transform Everyday Life By Nathaniel Brandon Part 6 Focus Another important thing to know about how money works is that it will always flow into whatever you've created in your life to receive it. Because it's energy, it will be attracted to what you need or want or envision. If you have always operated on a survival level with money, having only enough money to take care of your basic needs, that's where your money will go. If you start to attract more money into your life, you may have the tendency to increase your basic needs and still only make enough to survive. That's what happened to me for a long time. I had an underlying program that said, I can only have as much money as I need. It's not okay to have more than I need. Consequently, I created more needs, and ones that weren't particularly rewarding. My car would break down and I'd have expensive repair bills, or my cat would get sick and I'd have an expensive vet bill. Any extra money that came in would go towards something that was an emergency or a basic need. There was still nothing extra for fun and creative play or greater luxury. I found that I needed to create a budget that included what I wanted as well as what I needed. I started at a reasonable level, I'd like to buy at least one item of clothing each month that's fun or more luxurious. I'd also like to do some activity that would be fun. I would include these in my budget and the money for them would then flow in. That's the power of budgeting. A budget is like a blueprint. If you create a list, a picture in your mind of what you want to have in your life, you will create the necessary money. You can just keep expanding step by step. My money history. For most of my adult life I had very little money. I never focused much on money, I wasn't particularly interested in it. Essentially, I did whatever I had to do to pay my rent and bills, but I put most of my time and attention into my education and my pursuit of consciousness and creative expansion. I always did whatever I needed to get the money, various projects, housework, odd jobs, even my own business. Only one time in my entire life did I have a 9-to-5 job, for 6 months. I was used to living on the edge without much sense of where my money was coming from. In those years, I learned to trust that somehow the money would be there. Sometimes I would get down to my last dollar and then, somehow or other, more money would come. I was always cared for. Then, gradually, as I began to use this process more and more, learning to trust my intuition and act on it, learning to listen to my inner guidance and risk putting myself out in the world, I developed a career counseling people, teaching workshops, writing, and publishing books. As I followed my passion, I began to earn more money and to lead a more abundant lifestyle. It continued to the point where I was actually making a good income and living in a beautiful apartment, doing most of the things that I wanted to do. I came to count on that amount of money, although it was never a secure thing. I was still living from month to month, but money always seemed to keep flowing. I constantly affirmed my trust in the universe to take care of me, and I tried to follow its guidance. But a time came, all of a sudden, when I had no money. Some unexpected things happened and I was caught short. I paid my rent and my bills, and I looked in my checkbook and there was nothing left. I didn't have any savings or other resources to fall back on. That was a very startling experience because by that time, I was used to having a certain amount of money. What amazed me about this experience is that I had only five minutes of fear. I thought, oh my god, what am I going to do? Then, I felt totally calm. I had to have that five minutes of fear, and then, it was as if there were no more fears about money left after that. I knew I was going to be okay. A key point to this is that I knew I would be willing to do whatever the universe asked me to do. I remember thinking, well, I love my apartment, but I could give it up. I love all the things I have, but I could give them up. If the universe wants me to go live in a tent in someone's backyard, I'll do that. It will probably be wonderful. There was an incredible feeling of trust and knowing that none of the things I might lose were that important. 
Whatever I did next, even though it might be totally different, would be wonderful, too. I would be taken care of. It wasn't just an intellectual knowing, because I had already known this intellectually for a long time. Living through those five minutes of fear left me with a feeling of fearlessness. Emotionally, I knew that I was okay. It was a very profound experience. I ended up cutting back a little bit on my expenses and lifestyle. That felt fine and I didn't feel deprived at all. In fact, it was a nice discipline for a while. Everything I needed was provided. Money came in to cover my expenses and I had a feeling of relief. I knew I had come to the level of income my form could currently handle. I wasn't ahead of myself in any way and from then on, it was as if I came to earth and was building from a solid foundation. At that moment, I felt I was standing on a strong base of trust in the universe. From then on, I knew the amount of money in my life would keep expanding, and I would never go back to not having. After that happened, there was an increasing flow of money in my life. I moved to a new level of business and finance that I had never dealt with before. I had become really good at learning how to follow the universe on one level, but the new challenge was learning to trust at a more expanded level where the stakes were higher. In confronting this new level of prosperity, I felt at first rather ignorant and helpless. I knew I needed help, so I asked the universe to send me the right people to teach and guide me in this area. After interviewing a number of different financial advisors, I was led to both an accountant and a business manager who were perfect for me and who helped me learn what I needed to know. Like most people, I have found that as my income expands, my expenses and responsibilities seem to expand right along with it. Interestingly enough, it seems to work in reverse as well, I always seem to create exactly as much money as I need to support the lifestyle I have created. Sometimes, when I'm confronted with a large unexpected expense, I wonder how it's going to get handled. One way or another, it always does, often in surprising and unexpected ways. It frequently seems as if some higher power within me is watching over me and making the whole thing work. My job is to keep learning more on a practical level about managing my business and financial situation, while continuing to do my inner work of learning not to push myself so hard, and how to relax and receive more easily. The more I bring myself into balance, the more smoothly money flows in my life. Here is a wonderful story that illustrates the miraculous way the universe works when we trust and follow our intuition. In the original edition of Living in the Light, I wrote about buying a piece of property in Hawaii because I had a strong intuitive feeling that it was the right thing to do. Logically, it did not make sense, and my financial advisors were not in favor of it. Still, I went ahead because it felt right to me. One factor in this decision was the fact that this beautiful land was about to be bought by an unscrupulous and exploitive developer. At the time I wrote the book, I wasn't quite sure what would happen next, but felt very empowered by trusting myself that much. Subsequently, I had many moments of doubting that decision. I wanted to create a home and a retreat center in Hawaii, but I soon realized this piece of land was not large enough. Also, this land was on Maui and I felt strongly that I needed to be on Kauai. I eventually decided to sell this property. It took quite some time before it was sold, however, and ultimately resulted in a moderate financial loss for me. Since the sale was handled by an agent, I didn't meet the purchasers of the property. I chalked the whole thing up to a learning experience and eventually bought the property I real ly wanted on Kauai, where I still live. A few years later, my mother, who lives on Maui, happened to meet the two men who had bought my property. They told her this amazing story, they had been living in Los Angeles, working hard and longing for a big change in their lives. They read my book Creative Visualization and decided to move to Hawaii. They began visualizing the ideal property they would like to find there, and got a very vivid image and feeling about it. They took a trip to Maui and looked at many pieces of property, but none was right. 
Just as they were about to leave, they went to see one last piece, and it was exactly as they imagined. Someone else had put in an offer, but that offer fell through, and they were able to buy it. Only when they signed the papers did they realize that they were buying my property. We eventually became friends. They developed the property beautifully, creating a lovely flower farm and bed and breakfast, and have lived there happily for many years. I now feel that I was guided to buy that property in order to make sure that it got to the people who were meant to care for it. I may have lost some money, but I gained enormous satisfaction. Meditation Sit or lie down in a position that is comfortable for you. Close your eyes and begin breathing in an easy, natural way. With each breath, you are becoming more deeply relaxed. Begin to notice how you're feeling. How do you feel emotion, ally? How does your body feel? Notice the energy in your body. What does it feel like? See yourself taking in more energy with each breath. You are energized and alive. Start to imagine this energy as money. As you open to your own energy, you open to abundance. Imagine having all the money you need to do the things that are most important to you, and to create a lifestyle that is in harmony with your being and with the earth. Exercise. Lack of money may mirror the energy blocks within you. Write down all the ways in which you limit your desires and creativity. In what ways are you not doing what you want to do? Some examples of this are, 1. I'm doing administrative work in an office when I'd rather be working with children. 2. I want to meditate, but there's never time. 3. I'd like to explore my art more, but I have no time, I have to earn a living. 4. I want to tell my mother, friend, partner, how I'm feeling, but am afraid I'll hurt her, him. Now imagine yourself doing exactly what you want to do in each of these areas. Chapter 19 Health Our body is our primary creation, the vehicle we have chosen to express us in the physical world. By looking at our bodies, listening to them, and feeling them, we can read a great deal about our spiritual, mental, and emotional energy patterns. The body is our primary feedback mechanism that can show us what is and isn't working about our way of thinking, expressing, and living. Any normal child, who has had a reasonably positive environment, has a beautiful, lively body filled with vitality. That beauty, aliveness, and vitality are simply the natural energy of the universe flowing freely through, unimpeded by negative habits. Small children in a supportive environment are totally spontaneous beings. They eat when they are hungry, fall asleep when they are tired, and express exactly what they feel. Therefore, their energy doesn't get blocked, and they are constantly renewed and revitalized by their own natural energy. But because none of us have had even a close to perfect upbringing, very early we begin to develop habits that run counter to our natural energy. These habits are designed to help us survive in the neurotic world in which we find ourselves. We pick these patterns up from our families, friends, teachers, and the community in general. As we follow the behavior we have observed in others, or as we attempt to follow the rules laid down by others, we may move in ways that are counter to our own natural flow. We stop acting on what we know physically and emotionally, we no longer say and do what we really feel. We stop listening to the signals our body gives us about the food, rest, exercise, and nurturing it needs. It becomes too risky to follow our own energy, so we block that flow and gradually begin to experience less and less energy in vitality. As the energy flow diminishes, the body is not physically revitalized as quickly, thus, it begins to age and deteriorate. As we repeat chronic negative behaviors, our bodies begin to reflect these patterns, such as hunching over to express the inner pattern of making oneself small and powerless. If you are willing to allow the energy of the universe to move through you by trusting and following your intuition, you will increase your sense of aliveness and your body will reflect this with increasing health, beauty, and vitality. Every time you don't trust yourself and don't follow your inner truth, 
you decrease your aliveness and your body will reflect this with a loss of vitality, numbness, pain, and eventually physical disease. Disease is a message from our bodies, telling us that, in some way, we are not following our true energy or supporting our feelings. The body gives us many such signals, starting with relatively subtle feelings of tiredness and discomfort. If we don't pay attention to these cues and make the appropriate changes, our bodies will give us stronger signals, including aches, pains, and minor illnesses. If we still don't change, a serious or fatal illness or accident may eventually occur. The stronger messages can often be avoided by paying attention to the subtler ones. But once a strong message has come, it is never too late to be healed, if that is what we truly desire. At this point, however, many beings do not choose the healing. They decide to leave their bodies and start over with a new one, or move to another realm, rather than trying to work their way through all the old patterns in this one. If you are suffering from disease, rest. Your body always wants rest and ease if it's sick. Then, when you've become quiet, ask your body what the message in your illness is. Your body will always attempt to tell you what you need in order to heal yourself. One of my friends had been having severe pain on the right side of her face. Intuitively, she felt the pain would ease if she'd open her mouth and state more of what she wanted and more of what she knew. She did this and the pain eased some, but it still wasn't gone. One night, in a mood of surrender, she told the universe she was sick of the whole thing and she asked for an answer. Then, she let go of thinking about the problem and went to sleep. In her dreams that night, her intuition told her to stop taking brewer's yeast. She immediately discounted the entire message as bizarre and continued to take yeast. Then a few days later, after continued prodding from her intuition, she stopped taking yeast. Two days later, her face pain cleared up. When you ask for a healing, you never know what your body is going to tell you. It may tell you to stop or start eating something, express some feelings to a friend, quit your job, or go see a doctor. The key is to ask and then listen for a response. A client came to me who had been suffering from severe back pain for a year and a half. During the session, I asked him to con, tack the pain and ask his body what it was trying to tell him. In doing this, he realized he had not yet grieved his mother's death or expressed the anger he felt toward his father. He was holding both anger and sadness in his back. Recognizing this relieved some of the pain. After more talking, he was able to cry about his mother's death. Shortly after this, he became willing to express his anger toward his father. He started by talking to me about it, as well as writing out all his feelings. His back pain went away. His back pain has continued to be a barometer of suppressed feelings, he knows now that if he's in pain he needs to back himself up by expressing some feelings. Once we've developed a symptom, it can recur if the behavior recurs. Our bodies serve us by accurately informing us of any blocked energy. Below I've listed some common causes of pain or illness in the body. These may or may not be accurate for you. Each is accompanied with a healing affirmation. Use them if they feel right for you, or make up your own. Headache, two conflicting energies or feelings within, allow both sides to have a voice. I am now willing to hear all my feelings. Cold, the body needs rest, a clearing out of the old, the body needs to get back into balance. I am now willing to let go of the old. I now have rest and ease in my life. My body is in perfect harmony. Complexion problems, held back male energy, a need to take action and or express yourself more directly. I go all out for what I feel and what I want. I express my feelings clearly and directly. Skin rashes, wanting to break out and take action, ask yourself, what am I itching to do? I act on what my intuitive tells me. I am willing to try new things. I do what I want to do. Allergies, a lack of trust in the intuitive or instinctual energies, repressed feelings, 
allergies related to watery eyes are often indicative of suppressed sadness. I trust and express my feelings. It's safe to feel and express my sadness and anger. Back pain, a feeling that you have to support others, the world. A need to express and support your feelings, lower back pain is often suppressed sadness, upper back pain is often suppressed anger. I support all my feelings. I take care of myself. I express and trust my feelings. I trust others to take proper care of themselves. Menstrual cramps, not fully listening to and honoring your female aspect, a need to be quiet and go within. I honor my female completely and act on what she tells me to do. I relax, rest, and nurture myself regularly. Vision problems, not wanting to look at certain things within yourself or in the world. Often there is a decision early in life not to look at what you are intuitively seeing because it is too painful, when the inner vision is shut down, the external vision is impaired as well. I am now willing to see everything in my life clearly. Hearing problems, needing to shut out external voices and influences, needing to listen more to your inner voice. I don't have to listen to anyone else. I listen to, and trust, my own inner voice. Addiction. The more uncomfortable we are about trusting our natural energy, the more likely we are to use drugs such as coffee, cigarettes, alcohol, unwholesome foods or too much food, marijuana, speed, cocaine, or whatever, to attempt to manipulate our energy. We thereby deplete and denigrate the body further. Most people are afraid of their energy and power. They're either afraid of being too much or too little, they're afraid of having too much energy or not enough. The truth is, if people would be willing to let go of using addictive substances, they'd find their own perfect flow of energy. By doing this, they'd tap their true source of power and creativity. I see addiction as a means people use to pace, control, this power. Many powerful and creative people become addicts because they do not have an internal strength to support their energy. Without a trust in the universe, one's power and creativity can seem overwhelming. With substances, you can force your natural energy or you can dampen it, but either way, you're stopping the natural flow of the universe coming through. You don't have to be a full-blown addict to realize you're using a substance to manipulate your energy. You may realize you're drinking three cups of coffee to energize yourself then discover you're depleted later. We are a nation addicted to coffee, which I consider a strong drug because it seriously impairs your ability to trust and follow your energy. The key is to notice what you're doing. Become aware of when and why you use coffee. Notice how it changes your energy. Eventually, you will find that you don't need to pay that price any more. Realize that we all use some form of addiction to pace our selves. The cure for this is to build trust in ourselves and the universe. Become increasingly willing to experience your own power and strength. This is the true healing. For those who have a drug or alcohol addiction, noticing that you're pacing yourself is not enough. It may make you more aware of your problem and how shut down you are but generally the physical craving takes over any awareness. Because of this, I encourage people to get help and support through a group such as Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous to recover from alcohol or drug addiction. This gives the body a chance to heal and the spirit and emotions a chance to be heard. For more information about self-healing, you may wish to read my book The Four Levels of Healing, a guide to balancing the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical aspects of life. Meditation. Sit or lie down, close your eyes, and take a few deep breaths. With each breath, feel your body letting go into a deeply relaxed place. Relax your mind and let your thoughts drift. Try not to attach yourself to any thoughts you're having. Feel yourself relax into a quiet place within. This deep place is a source of nourishment and healing for you. Know that you can go here and find anything you need to know to heal yourself. If you've been having a problem with your health or you have a question you want to ask your intuition about your body, 
take the opportunity to do this now. Ask, what do I need to do to heal myself now? What does my body need? When you've asked, stay open to any answers that will come to you. An answer or an intuitive feeling may come right away, or it may come in the next couple of days. It may come to you in a direct solution or you may be guided to a person or place that will give you the answers you need. Know that you can heal yourself and that limitless wisdom lies within you. Say these affirmations silently or aloud, I am now healing myself. I am energized, alive, and filled with radiant health. Alternative Meditation If there is a particular part of your body that is sick or in pain, try this meditation. Get comfortable, take a few deep breaths, completely relax your body and mind. Now, put your consciousness into that place and ask it what it is feeling and what it is trying to tell you. Then, be receptive to feeling and hearing what its message to you is. Ask that part of your body what you need to do to heal yourself. Pay attention to, and follow, whatever it tells you. Chapter 20 Your Perfect Body Having a beautiful body starts with following the natural flow of your energy. Trust yourself. Express yourself physically in ways that feel good. Sleep as much as you need to. Stay in bed if you feel you need more rest. Eat what your body truly desires and follow your heart. If you're willing to trust your body, you'll learn what's best for you. It sounds simple enough. The problem is that we've been taught to distrust our bodies and see them as needing to be controlled. Some religions even suggest that the spirit is good and the body is a weak, sinful tool of the devil. Although we have evolved to the point where these beliefs are not generally expressed openly, we still respond to our bodies with mistrust. As a culture, we're accustomed to ignoring our bodies and their needs. Our minds tell our bodies what to do. We decide that a 9 to 5 workday, with 3 meals a day, is a reasonable way to live, then, we expect our bodies to cooperate, even if this doesn't feel good. We've also developed, intellectually, theories for what's good for us and what isn't, what foods we should and shouldn't eat. As children, we usually adopt parental and societal rules and habits regarding food. Even if you want to eat something else for dinner or want to eat at a different time, you're most likely expected to conform to the norms of the system. The body can tell you one thing and society another. Many of us learn to distrust ourselves at an early age. This distrust causes internal conflict and an imbalance in our system. It can set up a lifelong battle between the authoritarian and rebel voices within us. When we rebel, we may find ourselves craving all kinds of things we would not normally desire if left to our natural flow. We may develop the habit of going for the quickest available high. Our bodies may react to this imbalance by gaining weight, becoming hyperkinetic, losing weight, or developing food addictions and allergies. Then, to solve these problems, we may try even harder to control ourselves by following a rigid, restrictive diet. This causes us to feel deprived, so eventually, the rebel takes over again and brings on the very foods we were trying to avoid. We may play out this same conflict in regard to physical exercise. Many people believe the only way they can keep their bodies in shape is to push themselves to exercise in a very driven way. We may resist this by becoming lethargic and never exercising at all. Our society fosters this struggle and profits from it. We are constantly shown what a beautiful body should look like, and are sold ways of getting there. We are sold diets, miracle weight loss plans, low-calorie or fat-free foods, and health club memberships. We are constantly beating our bodies into some new idea of health and beauty. The problem with the external pictures and shoulds we adapt from outside of ourselves is that we are constantly dissatisfied with the way we look or the way we feel. The way to a healthy, strong, and beautiful body is to learn to trust and love yourself. You can begin this process by becoming aware of all the rules and ideas you have about how you should look and feel. What you should eat, how you should exercise, and so on.
It can help to write these down, adding more to the list whenever you become aware of another belief or rule. The process of writing down these ideas can help you become less identified with them, so that you can begin to have more choice about which ones, if any, you want to follow. In the process of doing this, you may discover more of your inner primary selves, such as the perfectionist, who has very high ideals it wants you to live up to, the pusher, who drives you to accomplish the perfectionist's goals, and the critic, who constantly reminds you of how you are failing. Once you gain some awareness of these ideas and energies, and are not so unconsciously controlled by them, you can begin to ask yourself what you truly want and tune into your own intuitive feelings about what is really right for you. Your own body and your intuition are, ultimately, the best guides about what is good for you and how to take care of yourself. You may find that once you are paying attention, your body will spontaneously let you know what it needs to eat and how it wants to move and exercise. Some people find that just by following their energy, they develop their own personal diet and exercise program that is exactly what their body needs, and this may change from time to time. For example, at certain times, their body may want to exercise vigorously, in which case it feels wonderfully exhilarating and satisfying. At other times, it may want to rest or exercise very gently. Many people find that they need additional information and structure, in which case their inner guidance leads them to the appropriate books, nutritionist, exercise coach, doctor, or teacher. It is perfectly fine and can be very helpful to follow someone else's diet or exercise program as long as it feels right for you. The process of healing your relationship to your body may take some time and require some help and support. Our feelings about our bodies are usually connected to very deep issues related to our self-esteem, our identities, our families, our sexuality, and so on. It can be helpful to have the support of a therapist while exploring these core issues. If you have chronic weight problems, food addictions, or an eating disorder and are not currently in therapy, I strongly recommend seeking help from a therapist, support group, or treatment program that specializes in these issues. Fortunately these days, there are many excellent programs and counselors in this field. Many people also find help in this area through Overeaters Anonymous, one of the 12-step programs, which are free and available in most cities. Assertion One of the most important keys to creating a healthy, beautiful body is learning to assert yourself consistently in your life. I have found that many people with body issues have a pattern of doubting themselves, of being afraid to trust their feelings and act on them. They especially need to learn how to say, no, to others when they don't want to do something. Many overweight people I've worked with don't have strong personal boundaries, they try to please and take care of others and allow others to intrude on them and take advantage of them. Thus, they need to use extra weight as a buffer, a way of creating some distance from others. Women, in particular, may fear that by becoming slim, they will be too sexually attractive. They are afraid of attracting unwanted attention or energy, and don't trust themselves to know how to deal with it. Some people are afraid of feeling too sensitive and vulnerable and not knowing how to protect themselves. Others are afraid of being too spaced out, they use their weight to ground them. If you have these fears, you can diet forever and you will not lose weight or keep it off because you are unconsciously needing it. This is why the process of assertion is so vital. When you learn to back up your feelings with action, you create an internal strength and protection. You feel safe to move into new situations and attract attention and energy, knowing that you will be able to say, no, to anything that doesn't feel good to you. You know that you will be true to yourself and take good care of yourself. Your female aspect feels safe and supported, knowing that your inner male will back her up. My experience has been that once people learn assertion, they are able to lose weight more easily and naturally without deprivation. The increased energy circulation in their bodies dissolves the blocked energy and the extra weight gradually melts away. They no longer need it for strength or protection, so they release it effortlessly. If any particular diet is needed, they are guided to the APRO, Priot Nutritionist or Diet Plan, or, 
they feel intuitively what they need to be eating, and find it appropriate and enjoyable to do so. Waiting equals excess weight. If you're always waiting to be, do, or have what you want, your energy gets blocked and your body may reflect this in excess weight. By expressing yourself directly and doing what you want when you want, asserting yourself, energy will move freely through your body and this circulation will dissolve excess weight. The more you're willing to be yourself, the less you'll need to use food as a substitute nurturer, you'll be receiving the natural nurturing of the universe. The key to self-assertion is to take action on your feelings and intuition. I've seen people lose weight simply by doing something they've been afraid to do or by expressing some feeling they've suppressed. By continuing to do this, you dissolve blocks and your weight balances out. At first, the prospect of asserting yourself moment to moment can be frightening. We're not used to stating what we need and taking action to give it to ourselves. It takes a conscious effort to tune into how we feel and risk doing it. Once you start doing this though, it feels so good that you'll want to keep doing it. You'll lose weight, have more energy, and look more alive and beautiful. There really is no turning back. The alternative is numbness and death. Every time I follow my inner voice, I feel more life energy flowing through me. Every time I go against it, I can feel a struggle in my body, and a heaviness and tiredness. If I continue to push myself past what my body wants, I become increasingly tired and lifeless. One of my clients was about 80 pounds overweight when she started working with me. She tried every conceivable weight loss program in an effort to lose weight but had not successfully solved her problem. Then, as she learned how to trust and take care of herself, she began to heal herself by expressing her sup-pressed feelings. At a weekly support group that I led, she was encouraged to express herself directly, saying what she felt and what she wanted. She began to trust her body and started eating only what she really wanted. She grew physically and spiritually lighter, and after a few months, she had lost about 40 pounds. At this point, she thought she'd gotten all she needed from the group and wanted to drop out, even though she was still carrying a lot of excess weight. I felt that she was still holding back a lot of feelings, however, so I encouraged her to express what she was still waiting to say. She shared that three members in the group had started to bother her and she didn't feel safe in sharing her feelings with them. They reminded her of people and painful events from her past. In them, she saw her husband, her son, and herself mirrored. They reminded her of things she had not said or done. They reminded her of self-betrayal. Because of this, she felt angry every time she looked at them. I encouraged her to work with me privately on these issues, and if she was willing, to come back to the group and express her feelings with group members. She needed to say what she had not said in the past. She did do this. Because of this, she began to heal her old emotional wounds and forgive herself for the past. Her energy is no longer tied to the past, so it can move more freely through her body. She continued to lose weight without overly restrictive dieting. Pacing with food. People use food to pace their natural energy level. If you're a person who has too much nervous energy, you may use it to slow yourself down, or if you feel a need for a pickup, you may use it for that. Both ultimately lead to a partial suppression of your true energy. People are generally frightened of their power and energy, so they feel the need to pace the degree to which it flows through them. Some people use food to do this. Others use drugs, alcohol, relationships, work, or various other addictions. As people become more willing to experience and express their natural energy, the need to use food or other substances in this way will lessen. Appreciating your body. Appreciate the beauty in your body and in yourself, today. Focus on what you do like about yourself. The more willing you are to do this, the easier it will become. Your body will respond to this appreciation and grow increasingly beautiful. It's become a habit to see what needs to be changed about ourselves. We're waiting for perfection before we'll love ourselves completely.
You can change these self-critical tapes by looking at what you like about yourself and giving yourself positive feedback. If you have trouble appreciating yourself, start by looking at others who have the same qualities you have and admire them. A friend of mine who considered herself 20 pounds over weight was continually putting herself down for the way she looked. She felt the only way she could possibly like herself would be if she were thin. Because she could not see her own beauty, she thought she'd start by looking at women who had a similar body type and learn to appreciate them. She started to see how beautiful other, overweight, women were and noticed how sensual and alive they looked. She started complimenting others on their looks. By doing this, she could look at her own body in a new way. She began to accept and appreciate herself. Her body responded to this approval with more life and energy. She gradually lost a few pounds and has continued to appreciate her body as it is. Ritual F or Loving Your Body Stand naked in front of a full-length mirror. Send positive thoughts to every part of your body. Even if you don't like your body, or don't approve of certain parts of your body, look for something of beauty in every part of yourself. Realize that your body has been serving you for years. Thank your body for its service. For example, you might say to yourself, you have beautiful, thick, shiny hair. Then look in the mirror at your hair and see its beauty, its shine and glow, even if it isn't shining and glowing as much as you'd like. Continue to appreciate yourself as you are, saying, I love the way you look. You have beautiful hands. You have strong healthy legs. You have clear skin. You have shining eyes. Run through each part of your body in this way and really send it love and appreciation. Find a way to appreciate every part of yourself. And thank your body for being with you for however many years, following your desires and serving you. It has been doing for you what you have asked of it. If you like, you can play music that you love, and use candles or flowers while performing this ritual. Do this ritual once or twice a day for at least a week. This ritual shows your body how much you appreciate and respect it. Your body has been criticized, judged, and rejected by you for years. It will respond quickly to love and energy. You will feel lighter and more energized. You will start looking more beautiful. The lines in your face will relax. You will start to glow with strength and health. You will be amazed at the results of loving your body. Exercise 1. List all the ways you see yourself waiting, waiting. What are you waiting to say, do, have, or become? 2. Next to each item on your list, write how you can take action. What can you do to change the waiting into saying, doing, or having what you want now. Chapter 21 Life and Death Life is the choice to follow the flow of energy within us. Death is the choice to block or go against this life energy. We are faced with this life or death choice every moment of our lives. Each time that we choose to trust and follow our intuition, our channel opens more, and more of the life force flows through. The cells of our body actually receive more energy and are renewed and revitalized faster. Physically, emotionally, and mentally we feel more alive, and more of our spiritual light can shine through. Our body stays young, healthy, and beautiful, and radiates vitality. When we choose not to follow our intuitive promptings, we close off our channel and our cells receive less energy the body begins to deteriorate faster. When we aren't following the flow of energy, life becomes a struggle. Stress and strain take their toll on the physical form and we can see the struggle in our faces and bodies. Lines of worry form and the body begins to bend with the effort it is making. If we continue to choose to close off the energy moment after moment, day after day, year after year, eventually the body will age, deteriorate, and die. 
If we change our pattern and begin to trust ourselves more, the body will begin to be renewed. A part of all of us wants life, wants to make the commitment to live, and is willing to trust our intuition and follow it from moment to moment. There's also a part of us that doesn't trust ourselves, I can't do this, it's too much, too intense, I don't want to surrender. When we go against ourselves, we experience only effort and struggle, when we surrender to life, we feel passion, aliveness, and flow. Any time somebody dies, they are consciously or unconsciously choosing to leave this physical body. It may appear that they're victims of a disaster or a deadly disease, but on a soul level, they are in charge of their own journey. Their spirit knows what it's doing, although the personality may not. Some souls come into physical form to accomplish a specific purpose and having accomplished it, they leave, or, failing to accomplish it, they may decide to move on to another realm or perhaps come back to this one in another life. Some beings feel they've gotten stuck and it's not working. They feel like they're not learning fast enough. This life started with too many negative odds against me. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'd rather start over. By consciously making a choice for life, you influence the choice of those around you. Moment by moment, if you choose to trust your intuition and act on it, you're choosing aliveness rather than death, and you're increasing the aliveness that radiates from you. Anybody who is connected with you will feel this and it will strengthen the choice they make to live. The more we choose to follow the life force, the healthier and more vital our bodies will become. By living as channels for the universe, it's possible to become more energetic, alive, and beautiful as we get older, rather than less so. We will no longer leave our bodies unconsciously, through accident or illness. We will stay in the physical body as long as we desire, and will make the conscious choice to leave at whatever time we desire to do something else. Death, when we choose it, will not be a tragedy, but a conscious transition into another realm. Meditation. Sit or lie in a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take several deep breaths and relax your body. With each breath, let go of everything in the way of being with yourself. Slowly relax into that core place within. Recall a recent situation where you chose not to follow your energy, when you did not do what you wanted to do. Replay this scene in your mind. See yourself going against what you knew to be true for you. Then, notice how you looked and felt physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Now, go back to that same situation and see yourself doing exactly what you want to do, see yourself choosing to follow the energy. Then, notice how your body feels, notice how you look and feel about yourself. Spend a few minutes feeling what it's like to trust yourself and act on what you want. Exercise. Keep a journal of some of the decisions you made during the day. Notice when you did what you wanted and when you chose not to. Then, write how you felt about the choices you made. Notice how you felt physically and emotionally. As you become more aware of when you follow your energy, when you go against it, and the results of each, you'll increasingly choose life and aliveness in each moment. Chapter 20 2 Transforming Our World Transformation begins on an individual level and moves out into the world. The more I'm learning to trust my intuition and act on it, and the more I'm willing to experience and accept all my feelings, the more the energy of the universe can move through me. As it comes through, it heals and transforms me and everyone and everything around me. This is true for each one of us. The more you are willing to trust and be yourself, the more life energy will move through you. Everyone around you will benefit from your energy and begin to trust and be more themselves. In turn, they become powerful channels for everyone in their sphere of influence. And so, transformation spreads rapidly throughout the world. You may have heard of the hundredth monkey syndrome. In Japan, in 1952, scientists were studying the behavior of wild monkeys. The principal food of these monkeys was sweet potatoes. One day, 
They noticed one monkey do something they had never seen before, she washed her potato before she ate it. She repeated this behavior on subsequent days, and soon they noticed several other monkeys washing their potatoes before eating them. More and more monkeys began to do this. Then, in 1958, after all monkeys on the island were exhibiting this new behavior, scientists on nearby islands began to report that monkeys on their islands were also beginning to wash their potatoes. There was no physical connection between the islands, and no one had transported any monkeys from one island to another. This study illustrates something of overwhelmingly powerful importance for the human race and for our planet. Washing potatoes was a new level of evolution for these monkeys, and when enough of them had accepted it, it was apparently transferred to the monkeys on surrounding islands without any physical contact or direct communication. This is how the evolution of consciousness takes place. Every individual's consciousness is connected to, and is a part of, the mass consciousness. When a small but significant number of individuals have moved into a new level of awareness and significantly changed their behavior, that change is felt in the entire mass consciousness. Every other individual is then moved in the direction of that change. And the whole thing may have started with one individual who first made the leap. So often we look at the world around us and feel terribly helpless to affect any significant positive change. The world seems so big, and in such a mess, and we feel so small and powerless. The hundredth monkey story helps us to see how powerful one individual, or a few individuals, can be in transforming the world. Because the world truly is our mirror, as we change, it must change. You can see this easily in your personal life. As you develop the habit of trusting and taking care of yourself, you will gradually release your old patterns. Soon, you notice that your friends, family, and business associates all seem to be feeling and acting differently, as well. Things that previously frightened and upset you seem to have lost their emotional charge. Even the serious problems of the world, while they still concern you, may not seem quite as scary as before. The reason for this shift is that you are beginning to feel the power of the universe inside of you. To the degree that you experience the presence of the universe in your own body, you don't feel afraid. Of course, every time you open up to more power, more of the old fear gets flushed to the surface and released, so in the healing process, you will experience alternating states of power and fear. Gradually, however, a solid base of trust will be established within you. Others will feel this and in it will find the support to open up to more of their own power and truth. The people and things around you will reflect you in increasingly positive ways. The more light you allow within you, the brighter the world you live in will be. Creating the change One idea I frequently encounter, especially in groups of spiritually oriented people, is that all we have to do to change the world is think more positively about it and visualize the change we desire. Visualization and affirmation are powerful tools. I use them often and strongly recommend them as part of this process. After all, I wrote creative visualization and I deeply believe in the effectiveness of the techniques it describes. There is another part of the process that is frequently ignored, however, yet it is just as important. If the world is our mirror, then whatever we see out there in some way reflects what is in us. We must take responsibility for it and be willing to transform it within ourselves if we want to see it change on the outside. So, when we look at the world and see poverty, pain, violence, and chaos, we must be willing to say to ourselves, what is the poverty, pain, violence, and chaos within me that this is reflecting? I know that my world is my mirror and, in a sense, my creation. If the things I see weren't in me, they couldn't exist in the world. The trick here is not to take on blame or guilt for the world's problems. None of us is truly responsible for other people's lives, we are all co-creating this world together. And we are all doing the best we know how. We are here to learn from what is not perfect rather than blame ourselves for it. 
We need to adopt a positive attitude of responsibility, saying, I am willing to learn to trust and follow my own inner truth, knowing that as I do, I will release the pain and fear within me and thus heal the pain and fear in the world. Such a vow is very powerful and to follow through on it is no easy task. To do so, we must be willing to move through the deepest layers of our consciousness and recognize not only our own personal fears, but also centuries-old negative beliefs of humanity that exist in our bodies. To move through these layers, we need to be willing to recognize and experience all the fears, knowing that the light is healing and dissolving them. When people ask me what they can do about the problems of the world, I suggest that they start by recognizing and affirming that as they sincerely do their own inner work, the world is being transformed. I tell them to look at the social problems that fright, in or disturb them and determine what fear or pain it touches within them and how it reflects their personal situation. For example, if they are disturbed by reports of violence, I ask them to look at how violence has played a part in their lives. Has someone been violent toward them in their early years? Have they had violent thoughts and feelings? Have they repressed or disassociated from their own violent feelings? In what way have they done violence to themselves internally, harshly criticizing themselves, and so on? It has been my experience that many of us need help, in the form of supportive therapy or counseling, to deal with deep levels of emotional healing. For some people, there's a certain reluctance to seek such help, perhaps because they fear it's an indication of sickness or craziness. Our culture tells us that we should be total ly self-sufficient and that needing help is a sign of weakness. In reality, we all need support at times, and it is a sign of strength to reach out for appropriate help. Personally, I have sought therapy of various types at many times in my life and it has helped me greatly, as long as I trusted my own intuition about who to work with. If you are deeply touched by the poverty in which much of the world's population is currently living, you may feel moved to make some external gestures to help alleviate someone's pain, i.e., contribute some money, do some social or political work. At the same time, look within yourself to see in what way you believe in, or support, poverty or scarcity in your own life. This may not be a question of money, you may be living in some form of emotional or spiritual poverty while surrounded by material luxury. Or, you may be at peace spiritually and emotionally but holding on to a belief that money is evil, thus keeping yourself in a state of financial poverty. Poverty, on both a personal and worldwide level, is supported by our mass consciousness belief in scarcity. We deeply fear that there is not enough to go around of whatever we need, money, food, love, energy, appreciation. So, we create a world that supports that belief. There have been studies that show that there is plenty of food produced in this world to amply feed everyone. Yet, because of our underlying belief in poverty, we allow food to be thrown away in one place while millions are starving to death elsewhere. If you are concerned by environmental issues, consider this point of view. Mother Nature is symbolic of the nurturing, feminine aspect of ourselves. Disrespect and lack of harmony with nature are only possible in a society of individuals who disrespect and disregard their own feminine, intuitive nature. If you are attuned to your inner guidance, there is no way you can become severely out of balance with your natural environment. Just as our bodies are the manifestation of our consciousness in physical form, the earth is the manifestation of our mass consciousness. In a sense, the earth is our collective body. The way we treat her mirrors the way we treat our own bodies. The lack of respect and attunement afforded to our bodies is demonstrated on a global level by the way we treat our earth. Until we learn to love and trust our bodies, to listen to their signals, to give them the food, rest, and nurturing they need, to stop polluting them with drugs and unwholesome food, and to stop trying to control them with our ideas about what's right, I believe we will continue to mistreat our earth body. We must be willing to recognize and heal any form of violence, poverty, and imbalance within ourselves as individuals if we hope to eradicate these problems from our world. 
Healing does not take place on a personal or planetary level as long as we hide or deny our feelings. All feelings, beliefs, and emotional patterns must be brought to the light of consciousness in order to be transformed. When the light shines into the darkness, the darkness disappears. World Healing People frequently talk about what terrible shape the world is in. In many ways, things seem to be going from bad to worse, and this can be very frightening. It has helped me considerably to recognize that the world is currently going through a major healing crisis, very similar in form to what many individuals are experiencing. When we as individuals begin to wake up to the light, we also begin to become aware of the darkness in which we have been living. The patterns of living which formerly seemed normal begin to look crazier and crazier from the perspective of our newly acquired sanity. Fears and distortions that have been denied and ignored because they were too painful to look at begin to come into our consciousness in order to be released. Problems that were swept under the rug come forth to be solved. This is what I see happening on a worldwide level today. If we recognize the seeming chaos and pain in the world as a giant manifestation of our individual healing process, we can see that it's a very positive step. Rather than feeling like victims, we can recognize the power of the universe at work. We can appreciate ourselves as channels through which the world's healing is being manifested. Social and Political Action some who have heard these ideas become angry because they believe I am endorsing a narcissistic self-absorption that denies the problems of the world and negates the necessity of social and political action. Upon further discussion, I am usually, though not always, able to make them understand that this is not the case. Being willing to deal internally and individually with the original source of the problem is simply the most practical and powerful way to effect real change. It does not deny the necessity of external action on a large scale. The issue for me is the source and motivation for that action. I find that people are frequently moved by their own good ideas more than by their inner guidance. Often they are motivated by their feelings of pain, fear, and guilt into wanting to do something to make it better. They are coming from a position of helplessness and fear, struggling vainly to do something to eradicate these feelings. Unfortunately, this approach only perpetuates the problem it is trying to solve. The underlying cause of the world problems is the pain, fear, and ignorance we experience from being disconnected from the power of the universe. If we continue to project our problems outside of ourselves and fail to recognize the inner power we actually have, I believe we will support the very evils we are fighting. On the other hand, if we are willing to take responsibility for our fears and deal with them, we will clear the way for being able to hear the voice of the universe within us. If it tells us to take action, we can be sure the action will be powerful and truly effective. For example, a woman friend of mine became very active in the nuclear disarmament movement. When she talked about the issue in her work, it was obvious that she was feeling absolutely terrified of the possibility of nuclear war. This is actually a reasonable reaction, given the world situation. The problem, as I saw it, was that she was not recognizing her own terror and the issues of powerlessness and death that she was struggling with internally. So, her actions and words had a frantic quality, almost like a drowning person clutching vainly for something to hold on to. Gradually, over several years, I saw her work through this phase of her process. I believe that she reached a deeper level of trust in the universe. She continued her anti-nuclear activity because it was something she deeply believed in, and found great satisfaction in doing so, but the energy was quite different. There was power and strength in her involvement, which I'm certain made her more effective in her work. The same principles hold true in the social and political arena as in every other area of life, if you are doing what you think you should do, if you are motivated primarily by fear and guilt, then no matter how good your actions, you are probably not being as effective as you'd like to be, and you may even be hindering more than you are helping. On the other hand, if you are trusting your intuition and following your heart, going where your energy takes you and doing what you really want to do, 
you will see that everything you do has a positive effect in changing the world. You will be able to recognize the transformational nature of your actions. For many, this will include direct social and political action, and you'll be doing it because you love it. People around you will also be affected by your energy and vitality even more than they are affected by your words and actions. For now, my inner guidance had told me that living my life as I do, writing books, leading workshops, exploring my creativity, being myself, is what I personally need to be doing to effect maximum change in my life and the world. I've also gotten a strong feeling that I may someday be actively involved in politics, as I was earlier in my life, perhaps even occupy a political office of some sort. Although I have no particular desire to do this at this time, I know that if that's what I'm meant to do, I'll find it an exciting adventure. I'm curious to see what the universe has in store for me. The Media I was once informed by my inner guidance that television would be the savior of the world. I resisted this idea because I am not a TV buff. I did recognize, however, that as mindless and idiotic as much television programming may appear at this time, television is obviously an extraordinarily powerful tool for reaching millions of people instantaneously. I think it is no accident that it has been developed at this time and is to be found in most homes in the world. Although currently controlled primarily by people whose consciousness is thoroughly embedded in the old world, there are, even now, occasional flashes of awareness. It is only a matter of time until new world consciousness begins to penetrate television programming in a regular and significant way. Television is undoubtedly a major educational tool. With the universe in charge, it can literally become a channel. It could pro vid a network for instantaneously reaching a majority of the world population with conscious and creative new ideas. Can you imagine housewives watching soap operas in which people go through all the usual human dramas, but instead of the typical doom and despair, there is an attitude of learning and growing through life's changes? It could be highly entertaining, with all the usual sex and romance, birth and death, drugs and disease, marriage and divorce, but the characters could be seen to use their trials and tribulations in a positive way to evolve in consciousness, just as we are learning to do. Once the housewives get it, it's certain that children and husbands will get it in short order. It's obvious that the power of the media, movies, radio, newspapers, magazines, and books, as well as television, is unmatched in its potential for fast positive change once our mass consciousness is ready for that shift. A five-step process F or personal and planetary healing. 1. Affirm to yourself, the power of the universe is healing and transforming me. As I am healed and transformed, the whole world is healed and transformed. 2. Notice the social, political, and environmental issues around you. Pay particular attention to those that trigger the most emotional reaction in you. Ask to see how they may reflect your personal issues, fears, beliefs, and patterns. You may not immediately see any connection, but stay open to receiving this information through your intuitive channel. 3. Ask for the higher power of the universe to release and heal the ignorance, fear, and limitation within you and in the world. Be open to any inner guidance you may receive to seek support in your healing process through a counselor or therapist, friends, a workshop or group, or in any other form. 4. Regularly visualize your life and the world as you would like them to be, see the meditation at the end of this chapter. 5. Ask your inner guidance to let you know clearly if there is any specific action you need to take toward your own, or the world's, healing. Then. Continue to trust and follow your intuition, knowing that you will be led to do whatever is necessary. Meditation. Sit or lie in a comfortable position. Take a few deep breaths and relax your body. Feel yourself dropping into a deep, quiet place within. Feel yourself contacting that place of power and creativity, your source of strength. From this source of strength, project yourself into the future, a few years or more, and in this projection, imagine your life exactly the way you want it to be. 
Start by noticing how you feel spiritually and emotionally. Feel the strength and power within you. You trust your intuition and act on your inner guidance. Because of this, your life is unfolding in a wonderful way. Get a sense of your body. How do you look and feel physically? You now have a body that matches your spirit, strong, courageous, beautiful, filled with life and energy. Experience what that feels like. How do you take care of your body? What do you eat and how do you nurture yourself? Imagine yourself dressed exactly the way you want to be dressed. Your clothes express who you are. When you open your closets and drawers, you have just the clothes you want there. What is your home like? See yourself living exactly where you want to be. You have created your environment as you want it. Feel what it's like to live in a way that suits you perfectly. You have found the perfect job and creative outlet. Imagine expressing yourself in a way that brings you fulfillment and satisfaction. You receive an abundance of money for doing what you most love. You now have relationships that are honest, alive, passionate, and creative. People love and nurture you. If you have, or want to have, a special partner in your life, imagine that relationship as you would like it to be. Now, remember that the world is your mirror. As you are growing and changing, so is the world around you. In fact, you are part of the mass consciousness that is creating the world. So let yourself imagine the world healing and transforming, coming into balance, wholeness, and harmony, just as you are. Chapter 23 A Vision From the window of my apartment, I look across the San Francisco Bay at the beautiful city of San Francisco. The light on the water and on the city skyline is constantly changing. Sometimes it is cloudy and misty, sometimes bright and shining, but it always looks mystical. Perhaps this view inspired an image that I frequently have, I see an ancient city, gray and decaying. It is literally disintegrating, the old structures crumbling into piles of rubble. But it is being pushed aside because in its place, a beautiful new city is arising. This new city is magical, it seems to shimmer delicately with every color in the universe. I know that it is being built inside of us. It is created from the light.